All right. Welcome, students. Um, so we're beginning our studies of India, and I wanted us to start with um, an understanding of some of the physical features, uh, some of the climate issues, uh, challenges, some of the natural barriers uh, that face India. Okay. Um, so this is why you're working on your map in class. And so here's a, a very descriptive picture of um, India. All right. You'll notice um, that a couple different things. Um, first, you'll notice all of uh, the rivers in India. Okay. So in India, they have a lot of rivers. Um, and so that really influences uh, the nature of what um, is grown in India. Okay. Um, a lot of the times, though, these rivers uh, get dried up uh, during the dry season. And that's another unique thing about India. Um, as in with Egypt, there was a wet and dry season. There's going to be that as well in India. So let's kind of take a look at some of where um, our studies are going to take us. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we need to know about is or where are the Indus and Ganges river valleys. Okay. These are where the two civilizations uh, kind of start in this area. All right. Um, so the Indus River Valley is actually in Pakistan, all right, in modern-day Pakistan. So when we're talking about ancient India, you have to assume that these political boundaries uh, don't exist, okay, because in ancient times there were no political boundaries. It was all done by, all the boundaries were dictated by physical features of the land. All right, so here in, in Pakistan, current-day Pakistan, um, we have the Indus River Valley, all right, and this is just giant... Uh, green area here. Okay, notice all here's the main Indus River, but look at all these different tributaries that come in and feed into it. Okay. Um, next, we're going to have the Ganges River Valley. All right, again, you can see it's right here, Ganges, but it goes into modern day Bangladesh. Okay, and but it's all these tributaries and these main rivers that flow uh, into it, which are all of these. So this is which is a very big area. So this is the Ganges River Valley, okay? Very large areas of land we're talking about here. But you'll notice that in between these two deserts, or I'm sorry, in between the two rivers here, you notice there's a desert. So wherever there's not water in India and Pakistan, it's desert, okay? And so that's really gonna influence where people live and what is developed and how it's developed. Okay, so let's clear those lines. Um, the another, natural barrier are the Himalayas. All right. This is this mountain range located in the north of India and there's also a smaller mountain range over this way but notice wherever it's a yellowish brownish color is where mountains or higher lands are. So here these natural barriers that we have uh, for India to the north and east and west. Okay. To the south, the natural barrier is what? It's water, all right? So this is a natural barrier. Okay. Reason being is that a lot of people couldn't, you know, sailing wasn't very popular back then. Uh, a lot of tra trade and travel was done by land because it was expensive to ship things, just like it's kind of expensive today. Uh, but, you know, these... This, what, what made India unique was because of all these barriers. They were able to thrive and prosper as a civilization long before um, anybody else. Because they were isolated from everyone, they could develop unique and different styles of living, ideas of religion, uh, ideas of government than any place else because they didn't have that outside influence coming in. Okay. Another thing we need to look at here, too, is, well... If they're rivers, where's the water coming from? You know, it's a lot of it, a lot of these tributaries run from the Himalayan mountains. So we have a lot of snow cap melting going on that floods uh, the river valleys, okay? Other ways that we get rain in here uh, in India are because of monsoons, right? A monsoon is a, it's a seasonal wind, okay? And so in the summertime, the monsoons blow from the oceans, all right? And so they bring all of this moisture in, and so this is when 
it rains. All right, so let's draw a little rain cloud here. Okay, so when these winds are blowing, it's raining like cats and dogs in India. Okay, um, if you've ever been to India or, or met anybody from India, they will tell you that during the rainy season, it rains a lot. Okay, so there's a little rain cloud. All right, actually, I should have probably made it blue, but all right. Um, so let's clear the screen here. Um, but then in the winter time, the winds shift and they come out of the north. Okay, and we have these winter monsoons. And what happens with these winter monsoons is that um, the winds come off the Himalayan mountains and bring dry, crisper air, which dries out the area. So in the winter time, um, you'll notice that it's a lot drier. It's um, it's still hot, but it's not as humid. Um, as you would think it would be here in the United States. Um, so, you know, depending upon where you are in India, um, you know, you may have to get water out of wells. The rivers may dry up during the um, winter monsoons. Uh, it's just, it's a drastic change um, from the summer monsoons to the winter monsoons. All right. Um, there's going to be a little Google Doc that I want you to fill out with this video. Um, so. Feel free to watch it, rewind it, pause it, wherever you want to, um, that you need to answer the questions, and we will look at some of your answers when we get back to class. Have a great day. Bye.